All aboard for the transcribed premiere production, The Cruise of the Paul Parrot, that exciting story of a whaling cruise that turned into a hunt for buried treasure. Our friends now find themselves in just about the worst predicament they've encountered since the cruise began. Dirk Briscoe, who's been led to the diamond deposit on Galto Island by Red Mulhooly, is now in full control of the mine. He's blasted the landslide with his own explosives and is taking the gems for himself. He has so firmly entrenched himself and his men about the mine that no attacking party could hope to defeat him. Not only that, Briscoe holds Captain Dalton prisoner. And though the crew of the Paul Parrot on the beach of Galto Island does not know this, he is preparing to exterminate all of them by hurling explosives in their midst with two big catapults he has constructed. Meanwhile, on the beach, Mr. Grange is beside himself when he hears that Johnny and Sue have taken some of the Paul Parrot's own explosives from the beach and run off with them no one knows where. We now find Johnny and Sue around on the other side of the island. Johnny's arms filled with heavy, ominous-looking canvas bags. Oh, Johnny, do be careful. If you stumble, you know what might happen. Now watch my step, Sue. See, I always said you were the bravest boy I ever knew. I never would have thought of taking those explosives around on this side of the island. Well, gee, I bet you would have thought of it in just a minute. This way, we can sneak in the cave that leads from the back of the island to the mine and get right underneath that briscoe. Then we can set off the powder right underneath them. Well, they be surprised. But aren't you afraid Captain Dalton might get hurt if you blow them up from down in the cave? We've got to watch out for that, Sue. We just want to use enough explosive to frighten them. Yes. And then when they're caught off guard, we can free Captain Dalton and escape. Yeah. Gee, I hope it works. Oh, you make it work, Johnny. You've always been so brave. I know you couldn't fail. Gee, Sue, thanks. But there isn't anybody braver than you. Oh, you're just saying that. <laughs> no, honest, Sue. You know how much I like you. Gee, maybe someday... Johnny, look out. You're going to drop the explosives. I almost did. Look, Johnny. Right ahead there. The entrance to the cave. There's somebody on guard there. I should have thought of that. What are we going to do now? We'll have to think. Let's get as close as we can to the cave entrance without making any noise. I might have known this plan of mine was too good to work. Of course, Briscoe's men would know about that tunnel. They'd have to put a watch at this end to prevent a surprise attack. That's all right, Johnny. We'll think of something. I know we will. Shh. There's somebody else coming out of the tunnel. I've asked you. Briscoe wants you to go back through the cave to the mine. He wants some help with those blooming catapults of his. Aye, aye, Mr. Hollings. But why did he send you down here? He's on his beam ends at me again. I wouldn't help him aim explosives at the crew of the Paul Parrot, so he sent me down here as watch. Get along with you now. Don't you get in trouble with him, too, by being late. Aye, aye, sir. Aye, aye. I wonder who he is. He doesn't look like most of those other men in Briscoe's crew. Oh, Johnny, I, I gotta sneeze. Sue, you oh, mustn't. Oh, 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 what was that? Over in the bushes. Whoever's in those bushes, come out. All right, I'll get you myself. Ah, there you are. Don't come any closer or I'll throw this at you. I've asked. Two young'uns. What have you there? Blow me down explosives. Where'd you get them? Never mind. Let us alone or we'll blow you up. You'd blow yourselves up too if you tried. Avast, I know who you are now. You're the two young'uns with Captain Dalton's crew. And you're the last who jumped in front of Briscoe on Ascension Island when he tried to pull a gun on Dalton. Yes, I am. What are you going to do about it? Not a thing. I think you're two of the bravest kids I ever laid me eyes on. Who are you? I'm Hollings, first mate to Dirk Briscoe. Though if I had my choice, I'd like to see him and his whole blooming crew 40 fathoms under. Is this a trick? I'm telling you straight, lad. You may later that. Briscoe tricked me into sailing with him, and I've hated him ever since I found out the kind of pirate he is. Why don't you jump ship and leave him? He's too clever. He'd do me in if he caught me trying. But I'm waiting for my chance to get even. Hold on a moment. I just sighted light. I know what you're aiming to do with them explosives. All right. What are you going to do about it? I'm with you. It's a great idea. I wish I'd thought of it myself. There'd been nothing like a little explosion right under Dirk Briscoe's feet to make him forget about blowing up the crew of the Paul Parrot. Blowing up the crew of the Paul Parrot? What do you mean? That's just what he's aiming to do, lass. Let me plant the explosives in the mine for you. Will you trust me and let me help you? You'd better hurry. Sue, we've got to decide quick. Do you think it's a trick? Should we trust this man? Johnny, I like his face. I think he's telling the truth. I think we ought to take the chance. Bless you, lass. You'll never regret that. All right, Mr. Hollings. We'll go with you. Avast then, mateys. 
Full speed ahead. Briscoe's planning right now. Haven't you blasted swabs got those blooming catapults fixed yet? Mulhooly, shake a leg. Aye, aye, Mr. Briscoe. We'll be all set in a minute to drop them surprise packages right in the middle of the Paul Parrot's camp on the beach. Briscoe, you'll live to regret this day. Mulhooly, what I'm going to do to you when I get free will curdle your blood. What makes you think you're ever going to get free? <laughs> Stow that chatter, you red-headed walrus, and get that engine loaded. You other men what ain't got nothing to do, keep digging for them diamonds. We ain't got too much time to spare. Aye, right, sir. The first one's loaded, Mr. Briscoe. I'm warning you for the last time, don't aim that catapult at my crew. A lot you've got to say about it, Dalton. If I had a mind to... Uh... Oh, Blow me down, we're being mined. Lash me to a hard arm. Where did that come from? It seemed to come from down in the cave. And there's somebody rushing through all that dust. It's Johnny and Sue. How did you get here? Hush, Captain. Pretend you don't see us. We haven't been sighted yet in all this confusion. The best. I've got a knife. I'll loose the lines that lash you to this tree. Who are you? Never mind that now. You'll hear more from me later. Take these two young'uns and clear out of here while you're not noticed. There. You're free. I'll not forget this, mate, whoever you are. Sue, Johnny, climb over that parapet as fast as you can. There's one more thing I must tend to. Oh, please, hurry, Captain. They mustn't see that you're free. Yes, sir, help me. Who set off that blast under our blooming feet? If I find the swab that did that off... Dalton, how did you get free? Never mind, you rat. Here's a little present for you. Oh. I'll ask you, swabs. Find out who set off that blaster. I'll flay you alive. Hold. What's Mulhooly doing here on the ground? He's unconscious. Wake up, you blubber-coated sea cow. Wake up, I say. Oh, me jaw. Me jaw's busted. So help me. What hit you? Speak up. Dalton. It was him what hit me. It was like being rammed by a bowhead whale. Oh, me jaw. Dalton hit you? Why, he's... He's gone. Escaped. How did he get loose? I'll bet that scum Hollings had something to do with this. Men, men, calm down. Quiet. Avast, men. There's skullduggery afoot here. First somebody plants an explosion almost under our feet, and then Dalton gets free. When I find Hollings, who was supposed to be guarding the other entrance of this cave, I've got some questions to ask him. But if he can prove he was there on watch and nobody passed him, that means there's a traitor right here among us. And I have a sneaking suspicion it might be you. Red Mulhooly. Me? So help me, Mr. Briscoe. It, it couldn't be me. It, 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 I Stow couldn't. It. I'll find it all out later. All I know is that we ain't as safe as we thought we was. We're gonna get these diamonds dug out of that hill, or as many as we can, and weigh anchor from this place. And you ain't gonna use the explosive catapult on Dalton's men? I'll put you in a catapult and send you down to him in a bundle if you don't batten down your hatch, Mulhooly. Now, all of you, get to work. He there, come on. Get there. Get That makes the second time in a few days you've saved my life, Johnny and Sue. Man and boy, I've sailed the seas, and I've never found so brave a pair. We wouldn't have been able to do much, Captain Dalton, if it hadn't been for that man Hollings. I like him. I wish he'd leave Briscoe and come with us. Aye, mates. I like him, too. It's a blooming pity he's shipping with a rat like Briscoe. Here we are at the beach. Look, all the crew is gathered on the shore. Oh, they see us. Ahoy, men! We're all safe and sound. Blow me down, Captain Dalton. It's good to see you again. We just about gave you up for a goner, we did. Oh, three cheers for Captain Dalton. He's a good hand you can't keep down. <laughs> Slimy Bally, you never spoke a truer word. You didn't. Sue, you're safe. And Johnny, Captain Dalton, you're free. Why, what's happened? I don't understand all this. The best, Mr. Grange, there's no time for explanation now. That'll come later. Right now, we've got to clear off this beach and get aboard the Paul Parrot. And leave the diamonds behind, sir? Oh, diamonds and emeralds and rubies! Ah! We'll worry about the diamonds later. Right now, it's our lives we've got to think of. Just before I was freed, Briscoe was about to bombard the beach here with explosives thrown from a catapult. And he may start at any moment. And a catapult to hurl explosives? Why, I never heard of such a thing. I neither did I before today. But there's no putting anything past that sea rat, Briscoe. Step lively, men! We've got to clear off this beach and get aboard the Paul Parrot. Aye, aye, sir. Aye, aye. Step lively, step lively. 
Well, it looks as if we may fail in our mission after all. Oh, Mr. Grange, I wouldn't say that, sir. As long as we've Captain Dalton to lead us, he'll find a way through the stormiest seas to a clear passage, he will. And you may lay to that, sir. Well, Dickon, I can't say that I mind it as much as I thought I would. Even if we miss our goal and lose the diamonds. It's been a great lesson to sail with so fine a man as Dalton. I value the friendship of such men as Dalton and you, Dickon, far more than all the gems I could find. What? Why, blow me down, Mr. Grange. I, I'm all at sea, I am, sir. Them's kind words for an old salt like me, they be. Well, I mean every word of it. It's taken me a long time to see things that way. But I'm on the right course now. Ah, three blowing cheers for Mr. Grange. Ah! Oh, look, there's a man running out of the bushes. Somebody's firing at him from behind. Why, Captain Dalton, it's Mr. Hollings, the man who helped us save you. Blow me down, so it is. He's jumped that pack of sea wolves. Avast! Avast! He's hit! He's fallen! Huh? I'm going out there and bring him in. No, you can't do that, Captain. You'll be hit. I don't care if the bullets are falling like rain. That man helped rescue me, and I ain't going to leave him helpless when he's caught in a squall. I'm going to save him. What has made Briscoe's first mate, Hollings, try to join our friends from the Paul Parrot? Is he badly hurt? Will Captain Dalton be able to save him from the guns of Briscoe and his men? And will Briscoe get the diamonds after all? To find out, be sure to listen for the next thrilling adventure in the cruise of the Paul Parrot. Your Paul Parrot announcer is Dave Ward saying goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>